we have the top five most aggressive chess openings. You ready? Let's get right into it. This first one is from Captain Evans in the 19th century, and that is the Evans Gambit. Sometimes you sacrifice one, two, even three pawns to attack the king. Here we go. Evans Gambit starts with e4, e5, knight of three, knight c6, stuff you already see, right? And then bishop c4. Italian game is where it starts from. Black can't play knight of six, but after knight of six, they run into fried liver with knight g5. So they really don't want to go down that line. A lot of times you'll see bishop c5 doing the same thing that you are developing. Then I'm going to move my knight so I can meet knight g5 with castling, right? And then if you, you give up two for one, I'm going to be better there with the black pieces. But after bishop to c5, the move here, played by even Gary Kasparov back in the day, is b4 there it is b4 aggressive we gotta remember that right now before you actually discard this move look at b4 look at the move b4 here what is it doing well number one is attacking the bishop but it can be captured by two separate pieces now believe it or not after knight takes we do play c3 here because knight takes e5 will run into some issues but with the c3 move we actually can transpose into what we're already going to have if bishop takes b4 in many cases now most people do not take with the knight. In fact, they actually take with the bishop most times here. After bishop takes b4, um, this is an aggressive attacking tempo move or tempo opening. We're like every move you want to be attacking or doing something. After bishop takes b4, we go with the c3 move, attacking the bishop. Lots of open lines, diagonals, um, tactics are in this opening here. And uh, initiative and develop very quickly. After c3, bishop c5, very common move. They have bishop a5 and bishop e7 as well, but bishop c5 is very common. After the bishop c5 move, we strike the center with d4. Big center, and they're like, oh no, we're not gonna let you have that center. Now after e takes d4, what do you think you do here? Here it is. In fact, it's a trick question. We castle and we get out the way and have a nice day. What is this? Well, we're giving up a third. What is this? What do you mean? Why are we doing this? Well, let's see what happens. If D takes C3, now, of course, we've given up three pawns, B4, C3, and D4. We've given up, the, given up three pawns. Now, after this, after uh, D takes C3, we have the beautiful move, Bishop takes F7. Beautiful, right? To check, draws the king out. After king takes, we go queen D5. We check him and we pick up the bishop here and we get our piece back, right? Quick sample line. King goes back. There's no casting for you, bud. Queen takes c5 and then d6. After the d6 move attacks the queen, we go queen to c3. All right, all right let's go back a few moves here. Instead of um, d takes c3, there's another cool move that can happen, which is, you know, knight g to e7. What does this move say? It's like, hey, you can do all the tricks in the world that you want. You can do whatever you like, but I'm going to castle. I'm going to just get my king safe very quickly. Knight g to e7. Developing pieces following some principles. After knight g to e7, we take on d4. C takes d4. Very aggressive. Big pawn center here. Bishop moves back to b6. After b6, it's right to move. Nice combination that you should know here. The move here, in fact, is knight g5. And we live. That's what we say all the time. Knight g5 and we live. Beautiful square here. It just hits f7. But black say, ha, ah, ha, ah. I already knew you were gonna do that. You have lost your mind. Castles, right? Castles, we're gonna defend this pawn. And of course, taking this is usually wrong. They call this the two for one. We're giving up the bishop and the knight for just the rook and the pawn. Of course, it's the same material wise, but we actually are still down a piece in a way. So these the minor pieces could actually prove better later on in the game. But this is something that we wanna stay away from. So if this is something we wanna stay away from, how do we have them? Knight g5, we thought we're doing something, or is it? It's white to move here. How do you finish off black? What do you do? The move here is queen h5. And we, there you go, and we live. Exactly, queen h5 and we live. Absolutely beautiful, hitting f7, hitting h7, hitting everything seven in a way. And you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. In fact, one of the moves here is h6, just giving up a full exchange. We have one, two, three, Right, pieces on f7. After knight takes f7, we have rook takes. Queen takes f7. And check, that's the Evans Gambit. Very fun, very cool. Pushing that b4 pawn out there, throwing them off because they have no idea what you're doing. They're used to seeing the other stuff. Next up, coming in at number four, we have the Danish Gambit. This one, you sacrifice two and three pawns, and you have both the bishops, and you have great attacking chances. Let's see what that looks like after e4, right? e4 black goes e5 very stable now of course uh, the next move here is actually very interesting you play d4 so after the d4 move there's e takes d4 thinking but in fact black is like oh you're going to take with your queen and allow knight c6 with tempo like what are you doing this guy doesn't know how to play chess is what they're saying with the black pieces and then you also have knight f3 but if you play knight f3 i could play c5 and defend this pawn with a pawn and he's like again this what is this guy doing 
So then you play C3 and they're like, what, you're offering me another pawn? What is this? Then after pawn takes, right? What do we do? Do we take the pawn back with the pawn or do we take it with the knight or do we take it at all? It is white to move. What do you do in this position? The move here is bishop c4. Oh, look at that one. Yeah, that one is developing, right? It looks sort of like the first thing we looked at in the Evans where we just kind of given up material for initiative or for rapid development. That's usually what this is about, especially when you see gambits, this being the Danish gambit. A lot of times that gambit is about giving up a pawn or two, sometimes three, for rapid development and lots of attack. After bishop c4, c takes b2, and they're like, hey, you're gonna give me these pawns, I'm gonna take them, right? Then we take it back because we need to take that one back so we don't allow some decisive material loss. Bishop takes b2. And if you look at this position from a little, from afar here and up close even as well, the bishops actually are, are sharp, menacing. If the king castles, you may not survive in many cases. If you don't know what you're doing, even then, it's still difficult sometimes to hold and you have to be careful of what you do. Push this pawn, it can't go backwards and etc. right? So uh, the bishops are, look nice. You also have knight f3, you could castle at some point too. You have queen b3 or queen g4 in some cases, queen f3, right, as well. Uh, it's lots of development, very quick, and we have almost everything out. On the contrary, look at all of black's pieces. Yes, of course, we're down, you know, pawn or two, right? It happens, right? We're down a few pawns. Pawns, but at the same time we have rapid development very fast even the engine says it's about equal that's crazy right the development okay guys here we are with number three this one is called the halloween gambit now what kind of name is that the halloween gambit is a fun one very fun and we're actually going to show a quick game from mbl maxime bashir legrand from 2019 where he says i found my new secret weapon i found my new weapon right which is a very fun and blitz and of course this is a blitz game too as well let's let's take a look at what that is in fact after e4 e5 knight f3 standard stuff knight c6 and then white goes knight c3 a little bit different right of course you don't see this all the time this is three knights developing easy black plays knight f6 is four knights so now we have four knights on the board here and generally you would just develop a bishop or your pieces here and get castled now here's something i hope you're ready for this one this is a family channel what this is is the move here is knight takes e5 bro what is this you have to be kidding me, right? This is a full piece for a pawn. You have to be kidding, right? This can't be a thing. Well, let's take a look at it. After knight takes e5, knight takes e5. Now, believe it or not, being down a piece here, in fact, white is still okay. If you find the right moves, now, of course, the move here is d4, right? You're like, what? I didn't even get a piece back. This doesn't make any sense to me. Wait for a second. After the d4 move, knight g6 was played. After knight g6, the idea here with this opening is you have the big pawn mass, right? You have the pawn mass in, in the center here. You can also play f4 someplace, in some um, cases. You can play g4 too as well. You can also play bishop c4. You, you're gonna develop quickly. Now, anytime you gambit material, lots of times in aggressive, aggressive like manner or style, you gotta be fast, initiative. It's about that time. How quickly can you do things? So after knight to g6, e5, right? We build some more time, kick the knight away. The knight has to go somewhere. You can't go to any of the central squares. You can go knight g4, you can go knight h5, right? So you, you go knight g8, knight already is on the back, back foot here. Now, aggressive, think aggressive here, guys. This is about aggressive openings. I want you to think aggressive at home. White to move, what's an aggressive move you would play in this position? The move here is h4, <laughs> that's just out of the blue. You're like, what is this? I was thinking e6, you know, bishop c4, maybe something like that. Now, the idea here is after knight takes h4, we're just going to keep moving stuff like d5. d5, put both these pawns in the center. You also could play queen e2. You just sacrifice and open up lines and diagonals, stuff that you've seen in the Danish Gambit and, of course, the uh, Evans as well. So after, uh, this is not what happened in the game. After h4, black played h5. We just, we're not, we don't want to take any more pawns. You're doing a little bit too much, right? After the h5 move. Um, white develops bishop to c4 hitting f7 it's a weak point black goes bishop b4 i need to develop my pieces here bishop to g5 hits the queen black and then of course 97 just, everything's all blocked up this is really strange really strange and, uh, and it's still white's down a piece you know but we have a lot of initiative like which is equal to time after bishop to e7 bishop goes back to block you know the bishop line diagonal there then we play queen to f3 Queen f3 is hitting what? f7, right? We take this, that's gonna be mate and have a nice day. So black is forced to play a gross move, which is f6. This is disgusting. Cause after knight h6, obviously we snap the knight and then we do queen f7 and mating, right? So f6, oh man, that's gross. But hey, stop the mate, didn't it? 
The move here is, which is really strong, is queen to d5. Oh my goodness, hitting mate. Wow, and we're going to finish this game out here. I mean, it's literally only seven moves left, and it ended in checkmate. Now, after the queen d5 move, d6, because like how, again, how do you defend mate? Knight h6, we snap off the bit, the knight with the bishop. So, d6, queen check, and you're like, oh, oh, made it, ah, but it's not, e6, king goes to c6, the king is out in the middle of the street, chat, d5 check, right, at the very least, we can come back and take the knight, we can take this, we can take everything, but we're gonna go for mate, knight a4, run the king around the board here, king a5, bishop d2 check, king takes a4, a3, woo wee the heat, the heat, because the problem is if you go b3 or something b3 he runs to a3 so the idea is go a3 and then after a5 b3 check and mate what a game that's the halloween gambit hopefully you try that today and you win trick or treat or not this is a fun one that's number three let's move to number two here we are with number two of our aggressive chess openings this one is the cochran gambit that is played in the petrov's defense or the russian defense uh, is what they call it as well. John Cochran uh, was, was like one of the first to employ this in the 19th century. Of course, let's see what this is. So the move here is e4 to start off e5, knight f3 and black with a copycat strategy. This is called the Petrov or uh, Petrov or the Russian defense as well. After knight f6, we have knight takes e5. Now you have the Stafford Gambit, right? Which is knight c6 and you have the standard move d6. d6 was played, but here, this one's really interesting here because most times you go knight f3. You also can play knight c4 and you also seen in the um, knight of three, uh, knight of three, knight c4, and you've seen in the, in the world championship with uh, Magnus and Fabiano Caruana back in 2018, knight to d3. So very playable moves here, but one move that you're not considering and especially your opponent that you can try today if you face this is knight takes f7 what is that what are we doing usually you would do this when a bishop is on c4 or queen or something is defending the knight there is nothing defending my knight so he can take it which he does believe it or not you won't believe that the engine says that this is equal the idea here with taking this is that your king first can't castle and as you see in the Halloween game, we're gonna have a huge central con control, like lots of center control here. The main move, believe it or not, is d4. And you're like, wait, isn't this pawn just hanging? Well, quick trap after knight takes e4, you get the piece almost right back. You can go queen h5 and queen d5 if you like, right? And then you also have bishop c4 check as well, but it's easier to just get the piece back. Check g6, queen d5, pick up the knight. Very easy, very easy plan there. That's number two. Let's move to the most aggressive opening. Number one, let's look at it. Here we are with our final aggressive opening. Number one. Okay, what you think it is, chat? What do you think this one is? The King's Gambit. And today we're gonna look at the Muzio Gambit. What is that? Well, that's when we sacrifice a knight on the F3 square. Very crazy stuff happens in the King's Gambit already. But this one in particular, in the Muzio Gambit, this is actually a game I pulled from Shiroff back in 1990. Um, and this is a very, very strong game. Look at this game. After e4, e5, f4. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa hey, you're going to have to relax, okay? We don't do that kind of stuff over here. But in fact, we do. Very aggressive. After e takes f4, knight f3, right, stopping a queen h4. Bishop c4, uh, sorry, g5, defense the pawn. And after g5, we go bishop c4. After the bishop c4 move, which hits f7, it's already kind of wacky. Like, why is the pawn on g5? We develop. And then black plays g4 and says, you know what? Hey, I don't know what you're doing. You know, I want you to move your knight so I can play queen h4 check, you know, and try to stop the castle here. I can always play king f1 too as well. But white doesn't care about this move whatsoever. This is called the Muzio Gambit. And in gambits, we gambit for rapid development, very fast, initiative, right? With time, that's what we want. So after g4, we castle the king, giving up a full knight. Don't try this one at home, but actually maybe try this one in particular at home castles after castles there's g takes f3 he says i'm gonna take it i don't know what you're doing you have lost your mind and after g takes f3 queen takes f3 right so you're not even hitting this file yet right and the pawn is blocking it so in the game there was queen to f6 right defending saying hey queen trade trade when you're up not when you're down sheer off finds e5 e5 hits the queen right he's like wait a second <laughs> That was a cool looking move after queen takes e5. You don't have a rook e1. What are you doing? You, you, that was funny. That was cute, right? And then here's the shocker. Bishop f7. Okay, that's the second piece, 
right? I lost the knight. Now he's giving up a bishop, so I'm down two pieces already? Okay, well, that is correct. But also, those two pieces are not developed yet. So if they get developed, black's going to be 100% winning. But they're not developed yet. So the next move here is d4 from white. Wow, look how crazy that one is. d4. It's like, wait a second. You're giving up two pieces and a pawn here because queen takes d4 is with check. So he plays it. The move from white here, and this is sheer off. Remember, very aggressive, has the book Fire on the Board, one of the greatest aggressive books out. After queen takes d4, bishop to e3. What a move. There's a pin here, obviously, blocking, and I get another piece out developed. You got to move your queen yet again, queen f6, and then bishop takes f4. There's all types of checks. There's weird stuff going on on this file in the diagonal. Whoa. White, black's like, I don't want anything to do with this. So he moves the king back to e8, getting out of the way. We have to be fast. When you gambit and you give up material, you got to be fast. So we develop knight c3, get another piece out. Knight d5 is coming. We got the, the a rook swinging over here too as well. Knight to c6, I have to develop too, says black. Got to get my pieces out. Knight to d5, hits the queen, right? c7, we getting a piece back, at least getting something back. Black plays queen g6, rook a to e1 check first, right? We throw a check in there. And then bishop e7. And now here, right here, this is why the king's gambit could be one of the craziest openings ever on the face of the earth. Or any planet, that is. After bishop e7, what do you play in this position? White to move. Oh, my goodness. The move here is... Bishop d6! What is that? Can't even breathe. Bishop d6, this move right here is one of the greatest moves I've ever seen. <laughs> Bishop d6 is such a great move. The idea here is if you take it with anything, doesn't, I don't care what you take it with besides the bishop, obviously you can't, is checkmate on the back rank. What do you mean? Let's show it. Pawn takes d6, there's mate on f8 because the rook is pinning the bishop. All right, cool, cool, cool. That's that's cool, that was sweet. Ha ha, ha ha, after queen, how about queen takes bishop? Same thing. Oh, it's mate. Wow, that's sick. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Perfect. So we see this, and this is scary, especially when this happens. You're like, oh, he means business for real. I'm about to get checkmated. So he plays king d8 and says, hey, man, just take it. Well, the move here is, guys, queen f8. He done sacked everything. He sacked a bishop, a knight, a pawn, another pawn, like the queen, you know, and winning the game after bishop takes f8. Right, we play bishop takes c7, guys. You also could have taken on f8 too as well if you like. But bishop c7 is even a prettier checkmate. I mean, look at the geometry here and how great this game is. This is the Musio Gambit. I'm sure some of you guys are inspired right now and ready to play some King's Gambit. So, of course, definitely do that. Put the comments under the video and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel here. Hit the follow button over here. Hit the likes. Do all that stuff. And this was a great video. Very fun to do this for the aggressive openings. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed this one, watch it back again. And also check the, the videos right after this one. We'll see you on the next video.